Hi, uh, this is uh, a demonstration of our laboratory experiment that determines the charge to mass ratio of an electron. The working principle of this device relies on essentially using the Lorentz force. Now, the Lorentz force on a charged particle is proportional to the magnitude of the charge Q times a sum of two vector quantities. One is the electric field on the charge, the other is the cross product of the velocity of the charge and the magnetic field on that charge. Now, we actually use a particular setup to determine the charge to mass ratio which uses this Lorentz force. So what we do is the following. Let us suppose we have some area, I mean some region in space where we have two parallel electrodes. Let's say we have a cathode and an anode. The cathode is heated up and due to thermionic emission, the electrons released from the cathode and are attracted towards positively charged, relatively speaking, anode. So electrons are attracted towards anode because anode is kept, let's say, at a uh, higher potential delta V with respect to cathode. Now, this negatively charged electron, as they are attracted towards the positively charged anode, and if you have a small hole in the anode, then this sum of the electron they pass through this hole and become an electron beam. Now you see, in this anode, I mean, the electric field is very strong. So, uh, essentially, the motion of the particle is determined by the electric field alone. Now, once it comes out of this anode, where we have a negligible electric field, the remaining part, meaning outside this parallel plate, we set it up in such a way that we do have magnetic field outside. The magnetic field is going into this plane. So you see, I mean, it's going into the plane of the page. So the electron with some velocity as it comes out from the anode as a beam, it experiences the Lorentz force, the magnetic part, the V cross B part. So inside region 1, the electric field is very, very strong. We can ignore the magnetic field contribution. On the other hand, as the electron comes out of anode, it is in the region 2, where the magnetic field contribution is much stronger. The electric field is nearly negligible. It is negligible, let's say. Now what happens? As it comes out, the electron velocity, initial velocity at this point is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So Lorentz force, as you know, it will be perpendicular both to the velocity direction of the direction along which the electron is moving, perpendicular to that and also perpendicular to the magnetic field. So essentially, it follows, uh, the force follows from the right hand rule. So if we draw a right-handed coordinate system with x, y, and z as shown, then v cross b uh, gives you a force along the direction of z, v and b being along x and y, uh, as you see here. Now this force essentially makes the particle move in a circle. So force acts as the centripetal force, which uh, makes the particle go on a circle, and the speed remains constant. Our target eventually is to determine the diameter of this circle. Now, if we go back and look at this parallel plate, the electron when it started from cathode, it had nearly zero velocity. And as it is getting attracted towards the anode, then the change in electrical potential energy is E times delta V, and that must be equal to kinetic energy. This is where our uh, uh, working principle stirs. The kinetic energy of the electron as it comes out from the anode, let's say it is half mv square, that must be equal to the change in electrical potential energy, which is E times delta V. On the other hand, this Lorentz force, which is E times V times B, uh, the cross product 
usually have the sign of the angle between B and B, but in our case, the velocity and the magnetic field, the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So theta is 90 degree and sine 90 degree is 1. So we have the Lorentz force given by E times G into B, and that must be equal to, for a circular trajectory, mass times square of velocity divided by the radius. Now D being the diameter, so we write here D by 2 and we equate, I mean, the two quantity, the Lorentz force and centripetal force. And after a little bit of algebra, we can easily write the delta B is equal to 1 by 8 E by M B square times D square. Now this is our working principle. So you see, I mean, what we have to do is we have to change delta V, let's say. If we change delta V, that results in higher velocity. And if we have a higher velocity, then the diameter also increases. So experimentally, it's straightforward. Uh, we make a table, we keep changing delta V, and as a result, D also changes. All these data we can plot. Of course, we it, it becomes much easier if we plot delta B versus D square to take advantage of the formula shown above. And then if we fit it with a line passing through the origin, a straight line, then the slope of the line uh, gives us this orange box 1 by 8 E by M and D square. So if we know the value of D square, uh, then finding out E by M is quite straightforward. This is the working formula of the device. So what we need, what we need is the following, I mean we need three major items. One is we need a constant magnetic field over a region of space and that we can easily create using uh, Helmholtz coils. Uh, we know a pair of coil current going in the same direction gives you nearly constant magnetic field inside. And then we need electron beam. To create the electron beam, as we mentioned, we need a thermal cathode and an anode. A pair. So the anode will have a hole, thermal cathode will produce electron and this electrons will accelerate towards anode and will come out of it. We will get our beam. Finally, we need to be able to see the beam. It must be visible. But then we can't see electron uh, bare, I mean uh, naked eyes. I mean we can't see electron. Electrons are too small. So what we do is we take advantage of a uh, helium bulb. It's a glass bulb. So we can see through it. And there is helium at extremely low pressure, but typically 10 to the power minus 5 bar, if I'm not wrong. So these electrons as a beam, if it moves inside the bulb, maybe in a straight line or in a helical path or in a circle, in whichever way, they collide with the helium atom, the helium atoms are excited and they eventually radiate. So what we see is the light from the helium atoms and that help us to locate the trajectory of the electron. And this is what we do. The individual components, we have seen them in the lab. The Helmholtz coil, this pair, okay, and this is our electron gun. Uh, this side we have this anode. And here we have the cathode. Uh, the, we heat it up the cathode side and the electrons accelerate towards the anode and there is a tiny hole at the end of this cone. And then we also have two plates. Uh, these are, we can keep them at uh, different potential. They are called deflecting plates. So you can collimate or deflect the electron beam which comes out uh, at the end of this cone, the cath uh, anode if you want, if you want to deflect them. Now this electron gun is of course put inside this helium bulb. This is our helium bulb, the one I am holding. It has very low pressure helium inside as I mentioned. And then we need to put this helium bulb inside the coil. Inside the coil we have constant magnetic field as the arrows show. And then this helium bulb uh, will be in a constant magnetic field and the helium bulb already contains the electron gun. So we'll, we'll do our experiment using this setup which after assembly uh, it is available commercially 
uh, looks like this where uh, we are taking the picture along the axis of the two coil. So uh, as we look at it, this is the front view. Uh, this is the one of the coil and the back coil you can see here the glass tube is in between and here we have this electron gun and at the bottom we have the control box uh, where we have various knobs to control uh, the voltages and currents. Here is a magnified view of that electron gun, the one which is in the uh, glass bulb uh, or the one we are actually using. So the deflecting plates are there and then this uh, an outside and the tiny hole here and we have this cathode side and this these wires, uh, some of the wires are this uh, heating cable, I mean uh, they heat up the cathode to aid the thermoionic emission. And finally, we come to the control box. The control box has uh, three knobs. The left one is for uh, changing the deflecting voltage. At this stage, we will not uh, consider this. Our main knobs are uh, the potential knob which controls the delta V, this one. And we also have uh, the magnetizing current knob. This is the knob using which you control the current which is passing through the Helmholtz coil. So essentially, uh, you are controlling the magnetic field. So if you increase the current, the magnetic field will be higher and so on and so forth. Of course, the direction of the magnetic field can also be controlled this clockwise off and anti clock counterclockwise the switch gives you the control of uh, in which direction you would like to pass the current through the Helmholtz coil and this is of course the main power button now the first part of that experiment is to align the electron beam uh, what we mean is the electron beam as it comes out from the anode it must be perpendicular to the magnetic field let's say magnetic field is this direction and the electron beam is in the perpendicular direction then we know that it will have due to Lorentz force it will have a circular trajectory but what if the electron beam is not uh, coming out perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field then then it's simple you break the beam into two perpendicular segment one is um, the component of the velocity along the magnetic field and component of the magnetic field perpendicular to it the one perpendicular to it will uh, give it a circular trajectory but then this circle must be moving forward because the parallel component of the velocity so net result is we will have a helical trajectory and you can see here i mean uh, the in this setup this glass bulb we can rotate it about at the vertical axis so as we turn it about the vertical axis this orientation of this cathode anode or this electron beam which is coming out of uh, the anode side that will have an angle with respect to the magnetic field so you can turn it as you turn it, it will become, uh, it will create a helical trajectory and you will be able to see that. I mean, I have taken some pictures to show you that uh, the helical trajectory is quite visible. So you turn it, you turn the bulb until the electron beam is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And when that happens, you have a perfect circle like this. So uh, this is a nearly perfect circle. I mean, the electron beam is coming out from this end and then it goes in a circle and then comes back. Our job is to find the diameter of this circle. So what we do experimentally is we keep increasing delta V. And for small delta V, we have a small circle, then larger delta V, we have a bigger circle, and as we increase farther, we still have, we have an even bigger circle. So we find the diameters as a function of delta V. It's simple. 
And then, but how we actually find the diameter? Well, the front of the coil, there is a, a removable scale with an eyepiece. The eyepiece has a crosshair at the back end, this end, and one more hair in the front end. So, if you look through the eyepiece and align the crosshairs and uh, make it exactly aligned with the circle, you can see the circle at the back. So, this is a for the experiment. I mean, uh, if you switch on all the lights, this is what you see. I mean, it's not quite uh, bright. So, the experiment need to be performed at a slightly you know, darker environment. But in any case, once you see the electron beam going in a circle, you need to find the diameter by moving the eyepiece from the left hand to the right hand. So, you measure at the left hand, then measure at the right hand, uh, find the difference and that gives you diameter and you do it for a different delta p. That is, that is how the experiment is performed. So, the, here is the bottom formula again, which I mentioned that delta V, you keep changing, measure the D and then plot the data, fit it with a straight line passing through the origin, the slope will give us the, uh, the value of E by M provided we know B. Now, what about B? Well, remember that magnetizing control, that current we showed one knob, well, uh, that determines uh, that I, the current that you are passing through the Helmholtz coil and it has certain number of turns which will be given to you. Typically, we know that value uh, between say 100 and 200 in a typical laboratory setup. A is the uh, radius of the Helmholtz coil, typically again uh, 14 to 15 centimeter and mu naught is constant of course. And so, this formula tells us approximately the magnetic field inside uh, Helmholtz coil. Uh, strictly speaking, magnetic field inside a Helmholtz coil is not constant. It is uh, it is more like a constant plus uh, a very slowly changing value. So usually we ignore that, but that because that does not introduce a lot of error. But then, if our circle, remember the electron beam is big, so that it is not at the center part of the uh, Helmholtz coil, it's bigger than that, then the magnetic field will have slightly different value and we need to be careful there. So, that's those aspects we will discuss uh, separately possibly in the lab. Now, uh, this is the formula that you use for calculating B and so the slope that you determine is equal to 1 by 8 E by M and then B square and from there E by M is uh, easy to calculate and this is your final working formula. Thank you. Thank you very much.